gentlemen, I come to address you on behalf of the karmic board, on the practice of law in the feminine ray. I come to deliver to you a message that is the key to the raising up of the feminine ray in man, in woman, and in child. The practice of law, when it is practiced correctly, and when the law that is practiced is correct, is always the practice of cosmic law. As you are living in a plane of relativity, a dimension of time and space, It is your opportunity to define cosmic law as it applies to this dimension. And when you think about life as a step-by-step -step unfoldment of law, you realize that each day is an opportunity to define another aspect of the law. And when you have found a definition of the law, then you have acquired a tool in self-mastery. Also in the mastery of time and space. Now since the goal of life is the ascension, and the ascension is the fulfillment of the mastery of time and space, you can see that to define cosmic law is a process whereby the keys to the raising of consciousness are one. Let me give you a for instance. You discover the law of cause and effect through the five senses. Take the sense of touch. You learn of hot and cold and temperatures which the body can withstand, temperatures which the body cannot withstand. The five senses are instruments whereby you learn causes and effects in this plane. After you have had a certain experience in defining causes and effects in this plane, you come to the realization through the process of induction that there are causes beyond this plane. And so your sensory perceptions lead you to extrasensory perceptions. And soon you begin to realize that you are a manifestation of causes, some known and some unknown. Life, then, is a process whereby the sequence of causes and effects and the definitions of the laws of being progress in ever-widening circles until, from the microcosm of the self, you reach the macrocosm of the universal self. By drawing parallels and by seeing how what works on a smaller scale will work on a larger scale. With observation of nature, mankind have brought forth many inventions, many useful instruments for technology, for mastering the environment. All of this is the practice of the law in the feminine ray when you consider that the entire plane of Mater in all of its dimensions is the precipitation of the feminine ray. Then all of the discoveries of the laws of science, of music, of mathematics, and every branch of human endeavor, and every divine endeavor, must be the process of the unfoldment, the calculation, the working with the feminine ray. Now when you take the role of the mother, 
whose primary purpose is to nourish life in all of its manifestations, when you consider that role from a scientific and legal standpoint, you begin to perceive that being a mother of a cosmos is indeed a challenge and a responsibility. Just as you would not go about even the most simple exercise in matter without consideration, without the use of modern science, whether it be making toast or baking a cake or driving your car, all of these operations involve certain aspects of science which, although you take for granted, are necessary to the operation of daily existence as you now know it. I come then to shed light not only on the raising of the feminine principle, but on the role of woman in society and the role of the mother. I would like to say that from the standpoint of the ladies of heaven, the reason why the women of the world have not had greater success than they have had is due to the fact that they have not approached their role scientifically, but rather emotionally. You know the old saying about women changing their minds. Well, the changing of the emotional flow and the changing of direction shows an acute absence of the manifestation of the all-seeing eye, of the perception of the planes and dimensions of mater, and of a basic determination of a course of action that is based upon the laws of mathematics and the unfailing laws of cosmic science. Beginning then with the most simple programming of a daily routine, moving on to the more challenging question of bringing forth children. Women of the world must see that the practice of the law in defense of the feminine ray is a science that is at hand, that must be applied, that must become second nature to every woman upon the planet and indeed to every man. Therefore, let us consider a project that you take up with your family, such as going on a picnic. You make plans for the picnic, you prepare the food, you prepare the vehicle, you dress the children, you get out a map, and you plan the place where you are going. All seems well. Now from the standpoint of practice of cosmic law, This preparation is not enough preparation. For whether it be going on a picnic or a vacation or going to school or celebrating Christmas or simply gathering around the fireside for evening prayer, the ritual of action in the family must come under the domain of the practice of cosmic law. For you see, all of these activities are but rituals. They are not merely for the relaxation or the enjoyment of the outer consciousness of those involved, but they are for the building of a spiral of oneness in the threefold flame. And therefore, to engage in recreation, the pursuit of happiness and education, Without the practice of law, leaves something wanting. And you will find that you can spend your life with your family in all sorts of activities. And when that life is through, and when you take your leave of this octave, you will see that you have manifested only a part of a spiral and a part of a responsibility to be the divine parent to be father or to be mother. Now let us take that picnic. First of all, it now let us take that picnic. First of all, it is a pattern in the heart, in the heart of the Christ of each one. 
It is a pattern for the blending of energies in a mandala of the spirit. Whether there be three or four or five or seven members of the family, each member assumes a role of manifesting an action of the threefold flame or one of the seven rays or one of the four aspects of God's consciousness depending on how many are participating in the ritual. The action of the converging of energies for the building of a spiral of love is in reality the purpose of that picnic. It is also for the recreation of energies in the matrix of the pyramid. It is for the balancing of the four lower bodies, the meshing of the physical and emotional through joyous activity, through exercise and sports that will accompany the picnic. It is for the blueprint of the holy family at the etheric level. It is for a stimulation of the mind through nature, through the Holy Spirit. Now mother and father should guard the awareness of the purpose of this picnic, else the picnic's purpose will not be realized. It is then in the holding of a concept that we begin to see how and why the law is practiced in the feminine ray. It is painting a picture in the mind of harmony, of love, of oneness, of a merging of life streams, and of souls blending to create a note of harmony on the universal, a harmony that is a unique manifestation of your family, of life streams who have come together for a certain purpose, a cosmic purpose, to be outpictured in time and space. Therefore, in the mind's eye, or as a sketch on a piece of paper, or as a photograph, or a lovely Therefore, in the mind's eye, or as a sketch on a piece of paper, or as a photograph, or a lovely painting, you should hold a focus in your home that is meaningful to you as a design of harmony of that which you desire to accomplish. For precipitation in Mater begins with holding a pattern. It could be a geometric thought form, a star, a sun, a cube. And you might write the names of the members of your family on parts of the thought form. Knowing your children and yourselves, knowing their talents and their abilities, you can easily see how the flow of life through each one can contribute to the wholeness of all. And so, in the practice of this law, you capitalize on the talents and you use a situation such as a picnic to draw out of your children and your family members those talents, those ideals, those thoughts and dreams which you know will mature and give birth to great manifestations as they mature and make their place in the world. The mother has the direct responsibility for keeping the flame of love on behalf of each member of the family. It is a flame of adoration. The mother should feel at all times a flow of love from her heart to the heart of each member and so the mother is like the center of the maypole, and from her heart the ribbons of light go forth to nourish, sustain, hold the balance in times of emotional tension, arguments, and the little quarrelsome ways that come upon children, especially when they are beset by certain forces of the astral discarnates that seek to tamper with and to devitalize them of their natural virgin consciousness and their heavenly energies. It is the place of the father in the family to hold the matrix on the periphery of the circle of the maypole, to hold the outer circumference, the manifestation of lines of definition, of discipline, of awareness of activities of the Holy Spirit, 
of helping the children master their physical bodies in sports, in play, of mastering their minds through games, of numbers, of challenge, and of all sorts of things that come to the creative mind of a father who is able to see how his children will grow in grace through the exercise of the mind, of the heart, and of the body. And so, as the mother keeps the flame of a concept of home and of the victory of each member of the family, the father is active in helping each part become an integral part of the whole. The father, going out from the center, goes out to conquer, to conquer the world, to be the breadwinner, to manifest the supply through the matrix of harmony which the mother holds in her heart. You see then, when souls come together to sponsor a New Age family, there are equal responsibilities, and these must be shared in harmony, in mutual respect, and in that self-sacrifice which must accompany the marriage union and the circle of wholeness. Each family must have a head, and that head is the father. Each family must have a heart, and that heart is the mother. Each family must have hands extended in service, in work and in play, and those hands are the hands of the Christ, of the children, taking an active part in school, in church, in community. Now then, the Immaculate Concept for that picnic or any other activity must be defined scientifically and then the mother must give invocations for the perfect unfoldment of the flower of the soul of each one for a perfect day and a perfect outing. Whatever it is, whether it be the schooling of the children, whatever activity the family engages in, the practice of law in the feminine ray is the affirmation of the light of God descending to fill the matrix. Even as the mother's watchful eye and sense of being a guardian and protecting spirit must also be on the lookout for dangers. Dangers in the physical sense, dangers in the astral sense of projections against the children, against the home, and against the father that come through the media, through television, which is so misused in this period of Earth's history, through all forms of communication and art, through anything that reaches the eyes, the ears, and the perceptions of the children. For just as you learn how to define the law in matter through sensory perception, so... Your children are building up within their subconscious reference points that they acquire through their sensory perceptions. And life today is not what it was a generation ago, even in America. The young children are picking up all types of communications, pulsations, especially those that are unseen, of psychic rays, of tampering with the mental plane, of tampering with the subconscious by forces that you now do not even dream exist. And so the need for the tube of light, the violet flame, and the Archangel Michael decrees is a never-changing requirement. And the mothers must keep that flame on behalf of the household so that the Father may go forth to conquer, to win, and to be the victor and the hero of the family. The practice of law, then, begins at home, but it does not end there. For every woman has a right to be a servant in her community, and those of you who have raised your families and now look upon the people of the world as your family should go forth into situations in your community, especially in public service, in government. To be there a focus of a flame, to hold a concept, to keep the flame of the will of God. It does not matter what your training and what your position. 
whatever you can be in government, whether it is a lawyer, a politician, a member of government, a secretary, or someone who sweeps the floors. It is not in what you do with your hands, it is in what you do with your heart that counts. For as I spent several of my last incarnations in keeping the flame of life anonymously for my family and for other members of the community, so I am able to tell you firsthand what it means to God, what it means to souls evolving on Terra, to have someone, that silent, peaceful someone in the midst of activity, silently declaring the law of truth, the law of perfection, the law of victory on behalf of each one who is so busy serving, so busy trying to do good for humanity that he does not have time to make the application for himself. I would suggest then, if you are looking for a more than ordinary challenge, that you go into your communities with this thought in mind of being a keeper of the flame, of adoring the flame of life in the hearts of hundreds and thousands. I ask you then, if you have nothing to do at home, if you do not have responsibilities, accept your decrees and invocations, to go out and look, according to the will of God, making your calls directly to me and to the karmic board, to go out and look for a position where you can be centrally located to serve in this capacity of keeping the flame of the law of life on behalf of your community, your state, and your nation. If you have professional training or have the ability to acquire that training, then we suggest that you take on greater responsibilities where you can be involved directly in decision-making, in drafting legislature, in organizing, whether it is men's groups, women's groups, or community groups working for a cause that is constructive. You know, precious hearts, as we look at America, so many of the people have good intentions and desire to work together in the tradition of a republic and a democracy in a republic. And yet, when it comes down to working together, the energies of egos begin to rise, energies fly, people disagree on ways of accomplishing the same end, and they toil and they strive, and they toil, and they strive, and they argue. And so many times it takes months of trying before a common level of understanding is worked out. How often we see in these levels of government and community planning, if there were just one of our keepers of the flame in the midst, how smoothly the process would flow, and how encouraged people would be how their faith would be restored in this representative form of government, which is indeed after the teachings of the Ascended Masters and patterned after that which is to come in the Golden Age societies that are to be born upon this continent. And so I say to you, women of the world, men of the world, mothers and fathers, Keep your eyes open to define the law wherever you are. Keep yourselves alert to affirm the law and to call in the name of the Christ for the binding of all forces which oppose the fulfillment of that law. Increment by increment, cell by cell, situation by situation, you can conquer time and space by becoming keenly aware of the law that governs every event of your life and of the science that is your servant for the flow of energy to a victory of a spiral of light. If you would take what I have said and then consider other lessons that you have learned, such as in the governing and control of energy in the chakras, 
the use of the violet flame, the use of the decrees in defense of life and liberty and truth, you will see how the total knowledge that you have been given through the teachings of the Ascended Masters can come into a new alignment in your consciousness, a new perspective, a new usefulness as you go out from this meeting, as you walk, as you converse. You can look at life, as it were, through the emerald ray of Cyclopea, where everything is a mathematical formula so precise that, precious ones, if you only knew what it means to define the law and then to make your invocations according to that law, you would find a greater percentage of precipitation of abundance with less perspiration, less toil, less worry, less concern, less haphazardness. And so you see, life is a process of self-mastery through successive stages of awareness. And as your minds are becoming the mind of Christ, you are not content to live a life that is haphazard, to have things just happen by accident. You desire to be in the center of the flame where you can see and control and know as God knows all that is happening, why it is happening, and know just how much light must be released for a specific manifestation and a fulfillment of the flame. You are ordained to be co-creators with God. You are ordained to stand in the center of his consciousness, to have the use of his faculties of omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence. You need not be limited and self-limiting. If you think about it, why can't you be on the other side of the earth simultaneously when you are here? You are not manifesting this victory of the practice of the law and the feminine ray simply because you have not given your attention to it. Well, I don't think that being in two places at once is necessarily the most important accomplishment of the practice of the law. I think harmony in the feelings, mastery in your life service is equally as important, though perhaps not so miraculous. I would say then that to occupy space with the mind and consciousness space that expands across the cosmos, once you know the law and have defined it in your being, is just as easy as concentrating your consciousness in the body temple which you now wear. And therefore, expand your minds, expand your horizon. Whatever you determine to do and to be, ask God to consider that determination to guide the concept by his immaculate will, to round out that concept by the pristine purity of the all-seeing eye, to help you set the matrix, and then, once the matrix is set, to teach you the law for the fulfillment of that plan. Step by step, then, do you win in life. Step by step do you find that you conquer time and space. Step by step do you walk with grace into the ascension in the light. I will meet you there at the point of contact when finity becomes infinity within you. I am waiting with my arms outstretched and you will feel the tangible touch of my fingertips when you pass your hands through the dimensions of Mater into the plane of spirit. At that point of the nexus of the Christ, we are always one. I thank you and I bid you a good evening.